Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Alhamdulillah Innal hamdalillahi nahmadu wa nasta'inu wa nastaghfiruh wa na'udzu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina may yahdihillahu fala mudilla lahu wa may yudlil fala hadiya lahu asyhadu alla ilaha illallah wahdahu la syarika lahu wa asyhadu anna muhammadan 'abduhu wa rasuluhu allahumma salli wa sallim ala sayidina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wahlul 'uqdatam min lisani yafqahu qawli amma ba'du alhamdulillah all praises be to almighty god who has given us all the sustenance which we need alhamdulillah my dear brothers and sisters in islam alhamdulillah we are here for our third or fourth week of uh, kuliah zuhur recording so alhamdulillah the almighty god has still permitted me for continuing of this alhamdulillah summa alhamdulillah inshallah we will continue with our discussion last week on the third hadith wa anin nawas ibn sam'an radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu qala sa'altu rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam anil birri wal if faqala al birr husnul khuluq wal ithmu ma haka fi sadrik wa karihta ay yattali alayhi an nas akhrajahu muslim narrated an nawas bin sam'an radhiyallahu an i asked allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam about rightness and sin and he replied rightness is good character and sin is that which revolves being doubtful in your heart and you dislike that people come to know about alhamdulillah sorry this hadith was reported by imam muslim rahimahullah taala alhamdulillah last week we have discussed the first part which is regarding the rightness or we talk what is albir Okay, so Rasulullah SAW replied, Bir, Al-Bir means Husnul Khuluq, good character. Okay, so good character, we have explained about some ibadah. Okay, ibadah is not only a form of praying, giving zakat, fasting the month of Ramadan. But the word ibadah is very wide. Where small is a form of sadaqah and this sadaqah is optional it can be charity giving money it can be we helping someone smile is a form of sadaqah inshallah we will be discussing this hadith about smile in a muslim's brother's face there's a hadith of rasulullah sallam have said about that so all these things are white and we talk about ibadah ibadah means any form of act which can receive reward from the almighty god So for guys we go out to seek nafkah for family there is any bada For wife when a husband is back from work she please him preparing food for him is any bada Ha so when we look all these thing so the word ibada is very wide So who's no khuluq your character as what normally I share with my participants people see Islam through us If we give them a good character how the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught us inshallah islam is very clear to them by looking at the character but it's not understanding the fundamentals of islam through character you will need to attend class you need to listen to lecture and you need to read and you need to understand you need explanation but by looking you will know how islam has taught us to behave within muslims and muslims muslims with non muslims So that's albir. Al if is whatever resolves or being doubtful in your heart, and also the author have explained in this, the sins are of two kinds. First, the sin are the ones about which there are clear prohibitions in Sharia, which means despite it is an obligation upon all to avoid them. 
That means the haram is very clear. For example, drinking alcohol in Sharia is forbidden. In al khamr wal maisir wal ansab wal wal Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim In ya ayu al-lazina amanu in al khamr wal maisir wal ansab wal azlam rijisum min amali shaytan fajitani buhu laan lakum tuflihun. As Allah SWT says in the Quran, O oh, pious men, verily drinking, uh, gambling, believing in fortune tellers, worshipping to idols, all are the work of shaitan. Fajitani buhu, keep away from it. Okay? So, these are clear. Okay? And also, other adultery, Act, all these things are clear Forbidden Other ones are those Whose prohibition is not to be found apparently But their commission is re reproached And condemned by the human nature And thus one feels uneasy about them Therefore it is better to avoid them Also some of the macro acts we can put inside here Things are dislike. Even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala disliked that. When we look at the five hukum taklifi, we call it usul fiqh in mazhab shafi, that's five. Wajib, sunnah, haram, makroh, mubah. Wajib is compulsory for us to do. If we don't do, we leave it, it's a forbidden for us. Sunnah is optional. If we do, we will receive reward. If we don't do it, there's no reward for us. For example, we can tally it with a person who's doing overtime. You already have your basic pay salary. Why you do overtime? To get more incre more uh, money so that you have more, uh, I mean, more money for you to spend for that month, that particular month. So the same thing in ibadah. We want to do more sunnah ibadah in order for us to accumulate more Rewards from the Almighty God. Third, haram. Haram is forbidden. Allah already forbid us. We are not allowed to do that. If we do, we will earn sin. If we don't do, we will earn reward. Fourth, makro. Makro is dislike. If we don't do, we will receive reward. If we do, there's no reward for that. And there's no sin. Allah dislike it. Lastly, mubah. Mubah is permissible. You do, there's no reward. If you don't do, there's also no sin for you. Okay? But, if we do X which, has, which is Mubah, with intention, inshallah you can be rewarded for that. For example, sleeping, eating, taking shower, all these things are uh, Mubah. If we say it's compulsory, that means breakfast is compulsory for everybody to eat. Then how if a person who is fasting? Lunch Same thing So these are called mubah But before the person eat that meal For example lunch The person is having this intention That Ya Allah I'm taking this meal For me to Have more energy Or I'm taking this For me to have energy to work Because I want to earn I want to bring back money For my family A person who sleeps Sleep also mubah So the person sleep Maybe before prayers And he says that Ya Allah I'm sleeping This sleep for me to Compile Gain energy For me to perform my ibadah To do my ibadah better If with this intention InshaAllah you'll be rewarded About this rewarding system Only Allah knows how a person Will be rewarded So we as a Muslim We don't uh, Ask or we don't say it's not fair Ustad A person who just sleep like that The person can get reward For example a person who sleep Who have an intention at night I want to wake up for tahajud But when the person opens the eye It's at least 6.30 for example Subo time So the person gets the reward for Intention for tahajud Ustad it's not fair A person who wake up and perform tahajud And a person who sleep A person receive that uh, If a person have intention A person receive that uh, reward According to the intention we don't talk about it's fair or not fair Because the Almighty God is don't judge it A person who sleeps and have the intention 
but did not is unable to wake up he received the reward and a person who wakes up and pray receive the reward both of their reward level will not be same or maybe same only the almighty god the same thing i will always give example is that a person who have been praying for example praying for almost 60 uh, let's say 40 years okay the person may reach the seventh heaven or the person may not reach seventh heaven why may not ustad because we don't choose intention as what prophet sallallahu said inna mal a'malu bin niyati wa inna li kulli imrin ma nawa every action is based on your intention and every reward which allah wants to reward will see your intention not the action inshallah the action is good but what is your intention if you are doing it for worldly affair you will only receive praises but you are doing because of allah inshallah you will receive a reward a reward accordingly so there comes over here and a person who just received hidayah and a person who starts to pray maybe 20 years and the person pass away he may step the seventh heaven or he may not ustad why is it it's not fair He's, he prayed only 20 years and this brother been praying for 40 years and the brother may not this may because it may be of his intention who will receive what we have seen in the hadith but still the word inshallah there if he wills because we can understand we can really know what is the intention of that brother or sister has placed during that ibadah there. so that's why my dear brothers and sisters in islam is very very important for us to correct our intention before we begin with our ibadah even though later on when masjid al-falah when they put up my video when you are listening to it place your intention you are listening my sharing session about hadith is to gain more knowledge increase in your knowledge and to practice it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not for the sake of anybody not for the sake of for me also because if our intention is correct inshallah we will receive the reward accordingly so here comes the thing when something is undoubtful even the Rasulullah SAW says in his 40 hadith al halalu bayyinun wal haramu bayyinun wa bainahuma mutashabihat halal is clear it has been explained haram is clear it has been explained but things which is in, be in between mutashabihat is unclearful is doubt so what should we do uh, things which is not clear we leave it Because we still don't know what's the hukum as the ruling for that. Uh, if really it's very, very, if it's clear, then we carry on. Okay. So over here, okay, things which is not clear and people, uh, uh, things which are mostly disliked by people. And also the hukum is makro, we leave it. Do what is clear and the reward is there. If not clear, ask those who are specialized in that field. Alhamdulillah. So this is the sharing of that third hadith. Today we'll enter to the fourth hadith. Wa an ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala an qal qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Iza kuntum thalathatan fala yatajanath Sorry. Iza kuntum thalathatan fala yatanajathnani dun al-akhar Hatta takhtalitu bin nas Min ajli anna thalika yuhzinu Mutafakun alayhi Wallafzu li muslim Narita Ibn Masur radiyallahu anh Allah SWT said When three of you are together Two must not talk privately Ignoring the other Till you mix with other people Since that will cause him grief Hadith reported by Mutafakun Ali Which is Imam Muslim and Imam Bukhari And the wording is Muslims Okay Two must not talk privately Ignoring the other The author says The respect of human sentiments Is proven and enjoyed a point by this hadith one should never do a thing that hurts the feelings of others so what this hadith says if you are three of y'all okay three of y'all two of y'all must not speak or whisper within yourselves the third person don't you know okay and the third person may have doubt maybe y'all are gossiping about him y'all are talking about him even though he's in front Ustad Ghiba Riba means gossiping only behind them now he's in front of me 
Yes. And not only whispering, you are talking loudly, but you don't. You are not talking a language which that person don't understand. Okay. So if you want to talk a language which that third person don't understand, seek his or her permission first. That you are going to speak in this language, easier in conversation wise. Please excuse us. So can we get your permission? If the person say yes, if the person say no, then maybe you can dismiss from the group. Then two of you go separately. Never ever talk a person who's in front and you're talking in the other language which the person don't understand. Uh, that is why Rasulullah SAW did not allow. Okay. And he say, Fala. Okay. Do not. That is not the ethic. People may have this sen uh, sensitivity and the person may feel your gossiping about the person. So they may have this sadness in the heart. And we may commit a sin towards that also. Uh, so remember, I previously said about Mu'amala Ma'anas, Mu'amala Ma'Allah. So if you, your relationship between the human and human, that's very, very important, my dear brothers and sisters. A lot of them in the workplace, in a workplace, we use that. If unless it's a group, four of y'all, then no issue. This, this is salah, lah, three. A, B, C. If A and B are communicating a language which C don't you know, that is not allowed. B and C communicate a language which A don't know, that's also the same thing. Unless A only know, for example, Tamil. B knows English, Tamil, Malay. C knows English and Malay. So B needs to communicate with A. So B seek permission from C. Says I got something important to talk in Tamil language which you don't understand. So I seek your permission. We are talking in our own language for certain things. We are not uh, gossiping about you. Or we are not talking about you. Okay. Uh, so this is the manner. It's not we talk. Even we are not gossiping about this this person. We are talking by ourselves. But this person may felt left behind. Even though when we are meeting someone, we are meeting our friend. When that friend brings another friend, so maybe during our conversation we can just have a short. Conversation with that person So the person does not feel That the person has been left behind Okay So this is what Rasulullah Sallam has taught us This hadith is very simple Okay It's straightforward So we don't cause anyone with Hatred Until the person Feels they are left behind That's not the adab In Islam Whatever Transaction Whatever communication in, uh, Between human and human The main thing is that There's not Sadness There's no grief there Okay, it's not because of people die or what, then go grief. No. Sometimes our act may cause people or hurt people. So that's very, very important. Where our Prophet Wasallam has taught us. So inshallah, we try our best not to commit this mistake and try our best to always please people. But we can't please them. Please with good things where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which has taught us through Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has explained to us through in his prophetic tradition. Wallahu alam bisawab. Inshallah, we'll meet again our next week's recording. And don't forget to keep on praying to the Almighty God. May He ease all our affairs and may He safeguard all of us from the recent and current ongoing virus. Amin ya Rabbal Alamin. Thanks a lot once, once again. And let's we end our this session by reciting tasbih of Rasulullah. Subhanakallah wa bihamdika ashhadu la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Wal asr inna sana fi khuz la ladina amanu wa amilu salihati wa tawassaw bil haqqi wa tawassaw bis sabr. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah lazim li wa lakum wa billahi tawfiq wal hidayah. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.